T plus Booster 40 ship, seconds. It's one hell nominal. of a sight from here. We see it arcing right over top of us. We see 33 out of 33 Raptor engines lit on Super Heavy as it starts to ascend skyward. Coming up on maximum aerodynamic pressure, then only about a minute and a half until we get into hot staging. Wow, Dan, that was incredible. <laughs> we could feel the building shaking here, feel the, the vehicle's power. Now we're just about a minute away from shutting down those engines on the booster. Again, this booster is flying for its second time today. All right, so hot staging coming up a little under a minute. We're going to see all but the three center engines turn off on the booster. So our version of Miko, most engines cut off. And then just a few seconds later, hoping to see six engines ignite on ship to push it away. All right, hot staging, about 30 seconds. And definitely keep an eye on which way the booster flips. First ever directional flip we're going for today should flip straight up. See those engines powering down? Booster engine cutoff. Ship ignition. Stage separation. Incredible flip by Super Heavy Booster, and you can see those six engines, those three engines on the ship ignited. Six healthy Raptors <laughs> running on ship on its way to space. Peak that engine view. Booster doing the boost back. Chris, how's it looking over there in Hawthorne, man? It is looking Raptor up. Chamber pressure is nominal. It is looking absolutely incredible here in Hawthorne. As we said, six healthy engines on ship. We've got 13 out of 13 engines on the booster. Now down to those three, which is what we expect in the final moments of the boost back burn. Now, as a reminder, we are not recovering the super heavy booster today. We are instead going to do booster some... Boost back, shut down. And there we had a good shutdown of the boost back burn. Next up will be the jettison of that hot stage ship ring. avionics power and telemetry nominal. Great call out there that everything looking nominal aboard the super heavy vehicle, which is returning to Earth. And we're going to be doing some experiments with it, including a higher angle of attack re-entry, uh, as well as some engine tests as it gets closer to the Gulf. We are, again, because of these tests not recovering it, we are sending it to the Gulf on purpose to do those tests. But again, you see the booster on the left-hand side of your screen. You see ship with six healthy engines continuing its ascent to its planned suborbital trajectory. Uh, everything going very well so far for Starship's ninth flight. Now uh, four minutes, 15 seconds in. Great views from inside of the uh, aft engine area of ship there, looking at those uh, three sea level and three Raptor engines on the right-hand side of your screen. The booster doing its LOX dump, that liquid oxygen dump. So because we don't need some of that liquid oxygen propellant in its tanks, we vent that propellant out to lessen the booster's mass as it comes in for its landing. Just absolutely gorgeous views watching these two vehicles do their respective things in the skies over Texas here today. And Dan, we're approaching the five minute mark into the flight. Super Heavy is descending rapidly. Uh, what can we expect here in the next few minutes as it does no, its atmospheric directly. tests? Yeah, now as we had talked about, Super Heavy might not have a very smooth ride down. We're gonna be putting <laughs> it through this higher angle of attack. So we're kind of pitching it up a tiny bit, increasing drag. We've done this in wind tunnels. We've done this in computer modeling. It shows that sometimes the control isn't great, uh, but only one way to really prove it out, and that's to get real world data. So here comes Super Heavy. It should be igniting for its landing burn in just about 40 seconds from now. 
And we are going to relight 13 engines, then bring that down to three engines. As, as, as we talked about earlier, we will be intentionally Pretty shutting sure, down. We will be shutting down one of those three center engines intentionally to push the limits of the super heavy booster. Ship Raptor chamber pressure is nominal. And continuing to see six healthy engines on the ship, three sea level and three vacuum engines still ignited as the super heavy booster is making its way back down to earth. We can see those grid fins doing some heavy work. Booster landing start up. Ignited for our landing burn. And may have ended with that landing burn. Does look like we lost telemetry from the booster once we started into that landing burn. Did you see a confirmation that the booster did demise? So the booster's flight ending before it was able to get through landing burn, but again, we are not bringing that back. We we're expecting it to make a hard splash down in the Gulf. We were getting live data back the entire time through that high angle of attack flight. So that was something that was really vital for us to get during this reuse. First free flight of booster in the books. All right, ship has about two minutes left. Yeah, in about two minutes, we expect all six Raptor engines to shut down. That will be Seco basically second engine or second stage engine shut off. And these are some incredible views, Dan, from the aft end of the ship, watching as the engines stay ignited with the Earth in the background. As always, the Starship Avionics team, the techs. I think we just heard <laughs> the booster, <laughs> uh, but... All right, we got about a minute left into this burn. All eyes definitely on ship as we get through the final stages into its ascent. We're expecting it to start to cut those engines off in about 45 seconds. Terminal guidance. All right, just about 30 seconds to go. We're in terminal guidance. In the final stages of this ascent burn. We did see shutdown of the Raptor engines. We do stagger these, so we do the Raptors first. Those three have shut down successfully. Sea level's still running. Ship engine cut off. Ship, Ship engine cut insertion. off. The three most beautiful words in the English language. And great call out that we had nominal insertion. All right, if you're just tuning in, we are about 30 minutes into today's flight test. And the ship is on its suborbital trajectory. As you can see in some of the views and from some of the telemetry, we are in a little bit of a spin. We did spring a leak in some of the fuel tank systems inside of Starship, which a lot of those are used for your attitude control. And so at this point, we've essentially lost our attitude control with Starship. We are still on a path toward re-entry. We are suborbital, so no matter what, we are going to enter. However, this lowers the chances for it to be a controlled re-entry. So if you think back to Flight 3, when we had something similar happen, um, just the end symptom of a loss of attitude control, we were in a roll by the time we hit re-entry. So we are going to re-enter. We should hopefully still have views. Um, the Starlink satellites are pretty robust to still maintaining contact. We've got four of those terminals on the vehicle and they're pretty robust to maintaining contact even when we are in a spin essentially. 
Um, so we should hopefully continue to keep live views. It's going to still be dark um, until we get a little bit closer to entry as we are a little bit. Uh, we're coming up on Africa. I believe we do swing just to the south of that continent. Um, and by the time we start heading out over the Indian Ocean, we'll start heading into a sunrise. So not looking great with a lot of our on-orbit objectives for today where we were hoping to do the PEZ deploy and relight an engine and then really importantly get into that controlled entry to really put the heat shield through the ringer. Uh, nonetheless, Starship marching forward towards that re-entry over the Indian Ocean. So we'll continue to hang with it and give you any updates as things continue to change. All right, so 36 minutes, 15 seconds into today's flight tests. You're seeing some flat movement here on the ship. Uh, if you've been following along, we have essentially lost attitude control on the ship at this point. It is suborbital, so it's still headed to the exact same trajectory as before. Uh, we were not able to get that payload door open and deploy those nose cones. We've been dealing with some leaks on the ship. This is also what led to that loss of attitude control. So uh, at this point, we are kind of in a spin and we are also going to be skipping that Raptor relight. Uh, if you've followed through the history of Starship, this something similar happened, um, different cause, but same symptom uh, back on flight three, where we weren't able to maintain attitude control in orbit. And so we're going to skip the relight of that Raptor engine while we're in space. Uh, we are going to still proceed with entry, uh, but as we are not able to control the attitude of the ship, as we get into entry, it will enter in whatever orientation it is in at the time, uh, which does not bode well for the ship's heat shield, uh, as we're, we're not going to be essentially aligned the way that we want to do for re-entry. So uh, it is definitely coming down. It is definitely heading to the Indian Ocean, uh, but our chances of making it all the way down are pretty slim. Um, so we'll still get as much data as we can. We're still getting live telemetry, live views from Starlink the entire time, uh, and we'll continue to stick with ship as it continues on. We are about 10 minutes away or so uh, until we start getting into entry, and the light will start to pick up as we cross the Indian Ocean, uh, and we'll start to see a little bit more daylight, and we'll, as always, as long as we maintain that comm link, get some plasma on the way in, and start to bring the Starship back through the Earth's atmosphere. So that coming up in about 10 minutes or so. So we'll check back in with everybody in a little bit.
All you're... right, so we are 42 minutes and change into today's flight test. You're seeing the light show start <laughs> as Starship is getting closer to its reentry. If you're just tuning in, we were able to successfully make it to orbit, run into a couple of issues as we've coasted to our entry point over the Indian Ocean. At this point, we had lost attitude control of the ship and entered into a spin. The team made the call to do what's called passivate the vehicle, so we're essentially venting all of the remaining propellant overboard, and it's going to make an uncontrolled reentry. Important to note, this is a contingency that is planned for, and we clear the zones in the Indian Ocean where these entries could take place. Um, so we're not going to come down exactly where we would have had nothing happened, uh, but we do clear a tremendous amount of uh, space out in the Indian Ocean um, in the event that we run into this. You always, we, we understand that there are always risks, essentially with these flight tests, with the hardware, uh, but we don't really accept any compromise when it comes to protecting people. And it is uh, one thing to note is we will actually still re-enter in our, our planned airspace zone. We might be getting some video back soon. There we go. So this is a view essentially on the top part of Starship. You're looking up at the payload bay and towards the nose cone. So uh, views are going to be a little bit scarce potentially as, again, we are in essentially a tumble. We had lost that attitude control. Um, so Starlink, when it's able to connect, able to feed this down. Uh, we are at the phase where we would expect entry to start uh, within the next minute or so. So we are entering uncontrolled, but again, we're entering into an airspace and a sea space that is cleared and monitored in advance of launch and before we get to this phase. And with the views that we are able to see, you are seeing a lot of that plasma build up uh, during reentry. We do expect the vehicle to see about 1400 degrees Celsius. And there you can see the, the flap uh, trolling the attitude of the vehicle. So this is now at this point in the, the test flight, it is expected uh, to see it begin to uh, demise a little bit on its way back down to earth. Yeah. 